Hello and welcome to My Library First. I'm Scott Anderson, and it's part two of the inexpensive, easy to keep nano build. Now, the first part we talked about the equipment, so if you haven't seen that video, go back and watch that video. In this part, we're gonna talk about the rock my wife has picked, the coral she's picked, and why she picked what she picked. So come check out how my wife stocked her tank. For rock, we're using Tonga Live Rock. This is super high-end, nice live rock. And I'm using it because I had it. This is the stuff I put in my 29-gallon tank 10 years ago. It's been with me forever, and this is a great place to put it. For your tank, if you'd like to save some money, you could use any dry rock you want. But the rock you're looking at here is probably 10 to 12 bucks a pound. For fish, we have a green clown goby and two clownfish. Now, long term, this tank is not big enough for clownfish. It's five gallons. But we went to the store and bought the smallest clownfish we can buy, and they can grow in this tank for a while. Eventually, they'll be moving out of this tank, and we have a plan for that. Please don't buy clownfish for a five gallon tank unless you have a plan for the future. To begin with coral wise, we went shopping in the 210 gallon tank. We cut pieces of easy stuff and started placing that in the tank. We started with a colt coral, a piece of the sinulara leather, and xenia. One of the cool things about keeping a small tank over a big tank is little stuff like zoanthids tends to get lost in a big tank. Well, in this little tank, small frags of zoanthids and little corals like that are actually reasonably good sized corals. So she's able to buy little colorful zoanthids and things like that that in my 210 gallon tank get lost. And I haven't appreciated the colors in zoanthids and other things like I have in this tank in a long time. For this tank, my wife really wanted a mixed reef tank. That means LPS, SPS, and softies. For the SPS, she wanted something easy to take care of, but that was also spectacular. So she chose a long polyped bird's nest, and she also chose an orange encrusting pavona. And if you haven't tried these pavonas out, they are incredibly underrated. They're beautiful and super easy to take care of. For the LPS, she decided to take a risk. She bought a red Ganeapora. Now, Ganeapora are hard to take care of. But this Ganeapora is a frag off of the Ganeapora in one of the LFS's display tanks. So it's going to have a better chance than most. She also has an ACAN and a really small frog spawn in the tank. Her favorite corals in the tank are the mushroom corals. She's got three or four different species in here, but her favorites are hands down the blue and red rhodactis mushrooms. They are really just beautiful. They work really well in this tank because they can handle low flow and a lower light, which allows her to place them low in the tank where that's the conditions that are available. So I didn't stock this tank. These are all my wife's choices. I gave input when she asked, but she placed the coral, she picked the coral, she picked the fish. This is all her. And I think she did a fantastic job with it. The coral placement is great. The corals are thriving. The fish are doing good. It's been a really impressive little tank. So next week, we'll show you how we're taking care of this little tank. So thanks for watching this episode of my life, my comment, and subscribe.